Hello learners, welcome back to my channel Sradhas Physics. Now in this lecture we will see what is Wignos's primitive cell and that after we will discuss the Brillouin zone. Now let us start with our topic Wignos's primitive cell or we can say that this cell is defined in the real space. In the three dimensional lattice cell, the unit cell are not primitive cell. So let me tell you what is primitive cell and non primitive cell. I have already told you. Then in case of these are suppose the lattice points here I am drawing some lattice point. Suppose if I will construct a unit cell, so I can construct a unit cell by joining by joining the lattice points like this. So this is one way of choosing the unit cell, or it may be like in this way I can choose. This is another way, or it may be like. If I will join this line, these are the type of unit cell we can choose. So in the this one is suppose 1, this is suppose 2 and this one is suppose 3. So in the first two, 1 and 2 case you can see only at the corners the lattice points are present. In case 1 and case 2 only at the corners the lattice points are present. But in case the, the lattice points are present at the corners as well as the center of the unit cell. So this is called this one is called the non primitive non primitive unit cell and this one and two this is called the primitive cell. So in case of the primitive cell the unit cell will contain the lattice point at the corner only and in case of the non primitive it will contain the corner atoms as well as an atom inside an atom or we can say the lattice point inside that unit cell. So in the three dimensional lattice cell the unit cell are not primitive cell. The primitive cell can be chosen in many ways where the basis associated with a lattice point of a primitive cell is called a primitive basis. It means that if I will consider it is a, these are the primitive lattice, these are the lattice means these are the imaginary point and when on basis, basis means atom, molecule or ions, it will act as with this lattice point then these are called the primitive basis. So this is called the primitive basis. One way of choosing a cell of equal volume B of a primitive cell where B equal to A dot B cross C. This is your in case of the three dimensional cell we are considering is known as the Wigner's primitive cell. In case of the three dimensional we can choose the Wigner's cell in the Wigner's primitive cell in the two dimensional. Because in the three dimensional lattice cell the unit cell are not primitive. So here we will discuss the Wigner's primitive cell in the two dimensional case. Now we will see how to construct this Wignos's primitive cell. This primitive cell is constructed by following some procedure. So let us first draw. These are some lattice point you can see. I will construct this for you. Suppose these are the lattice points or the imaginary points in the space. These are some lattice point. And you know primitive cell means only the corner atoms are present there will be no atom inside this unit cell now let us see these are actually regular and periodic manner the lattice points are arranged now first of all what we will do the first procedure is drawing lines to connect a given lattice point to all the nearby lattice point so it means that if i will consider any lattice point suppose this one is my lattice point this one the red one so if I consider this to be the lattice point then the nearest means this one is its nearest and this one is also nearest. It is also the nearest one and similarly for the downward you can see this one is the nearest one. Okay. Now the second step is to construct a plane perpendicular to and passing through the midpoint of each other. We will construct a plane perpendicular to and passing through the midpoint of each vector. It means that, now let me change the color. Now if I will construct a plane perpendicular to this, it means that if I will construct a plane perpendicular to this and it will cut the plane perpendic perpendicular and we can say it will cut the plane perpendicular as well as at the midpoint of each, each line. So here, these are the midpoints and here also this is the midpoint. Okay. This is somehow look like this. Now the next step is 
the smallest volume enclosed by in this way is called the oignosis primitive cell so this unit cell that is this only part this is called the oignosis primitive cell so you can see this one is called the oignosis primitive cell oignosis primitive cell oignosis primitive cell primitive cell means only the corner atoms are present oignosis primitive cell so what we will do first we will consider any lattice point then i will join all the lines nearest to it and after joining this line then we will draw perpendicular and the midpoint it will cut this lines at the midpoint and the perpendicular to it that after this enclosed area that will give the oignosis primitive cell this will give the oignosis primitive cell and this can be chosen in many ways suppose this is this is your it will give suppose your square lattice or the square cell square unit cell now also we can draw here you can see you will on, only consider suppose this point now we will join the line nearest to it sorry the lattice point nearest to it and again this and this one is also the nearest one and this one is also the nearest one similarly the lattice this is for the parallelogram structure here i am considering means the lattice point are just you can see the lattice point are arranged in this way okay so now if i'll draw the lines nearest to this lattice point so i can draw like this now we have to draw the perpendiculars that will cut this lines in a lines at the midpoint to this so this is suppose and this one again the midpoint of this is this and the midpoint of this one is like this and the midpoint and here the lattice planes i can draw like this so this particular enclosed area this is called the oignosis primitive cell okay this particular area this is known as the oignosis primitive cell so this is the wigner cis cell in the two dimensional square lattice and this is the wigner cis cell in the parallelogram lattice Par two dimensional square lattice means you can see the lattice point in this case that is the first case these are just like this square lattice means in the a direction in the b direction that is in the x direction and in the y direction the distance between the lattice point the arrangement is regular or we can say that the distance between them is a suppose if i will consider a then all the distance that is in this direction it is a and in this direction if i will say this is also a but in case of the parallelogram lattice you can see this is a parallelogram lattice that is they will arrange in this way in this way okay so this is your parallelogram lattice so now you can see the difference between this two that is if i will consider the wigner cis so the lattice point that is uh, the two dimensional square lattice if i will consider then it will be somehow look like this square type and if i will consider the parallelogram lattice then in this will be somehow like octagon cell so the important thing is this wignosis primitive cell is constructed in the real space okay this is constructed in the real space now we will see the brilliant jet or the reciprocal space of the wignosis cell the primitive cell of the reciprocal lattice it may be taken to be parallelopipe denoted by hkl hkl is the miller indices that is miller plane is the fourier space plane or you can say that in the k space we have plotted this hkl plane so the parallelopipe contains one reciprocal lattice point and each corner is shared by the eight parallelopipe so you can say that this will be 8 into 1 by 8 that is equal to 1 1 lattice point per parallelopipe So in case of a parallel pipe structure, this is some more. This is a parallel pipe structure. So in this case, there are eight corner, and in each corner there will be eight atoms. In each corner, one atom will present. Since there are eight corner, so there will be eight atom will be present. So total number of atom is eight. But this single atom is shared by eight other atom, and for each corner, this atom is shared by eight other. cell this single atom is shared by eight of the unit cell 
so you can say that for this 8 corner so this will be 8 into 1 by 8th part suppose let us see for this atom suppose this atom in this case this atom is shared by other 8 cell so in this cell in this first unit cell in this cell that we have taken so in this particular cell we can say that 1 by 8th part of this atom is contained in this parallelopite and similarly for this this will be this corner 1 by 8 part of the atom is contained in this unit cell and so on for the 8 corner atom. So there will be 8 into 1 by 8 that is equal to total 1 atom is present in this parallelopipe or you can say that 1 lattice point for parallelopipe. Lattice point is sometimes known as the atoms or molecules or ions. So here the lattice point we can consider that in case of this parallelopipe there will be 1 lattice point for parallelopipe. Now let us see. It is often useful to take the primitive cell as the smallest volume bounded by the planes normal to the G vectors means the reciprocal vectors of the nearest neighbor. Okay. So it is just another way of dividing of the reciprocal space into the identical cell which fill it uniformly. And each cell contains one lattice site at the center of the cell. I will tell you how to construct this brillouin engine. So it is the first brillouin engine, and the same construction in the direct lattice is called the Wigner C cell. So if we will consider for the direct lattice, then this is called the Wigner C cell, and the brillouin engine is in the reciprocal lattice or the reciprocal space. So the first brillouin engine is the set of points that can be reached from the origin without crossing, crossing any Bragg's plane. Okay. And the second brilliant zone is the set of points that can be reached from the first zone by crossing only one Bragg plane. I will explain you. So here, this is the first and second brilliant zone. I will explain this later. Now let us draw some lattice points. Suppose this is my square lattice here. These are the square lattices. Here I am drawing. I will first draw the square lattice. Just imagine this. These are your square lattices. Now we will consider any lattice point here. Suppose here I will consider this lattice point. Suppose this one is my lattice point. Okay. Now for this for this lattice point. As we construct the Wigner C cell, like I will first join the nearest lattice lattice point, and I I will draw a line by connecting the two nearest lattice point, and here like this way, and this is also the nearest one, and then I will draw a perpendicular, or I will draw a lattice plane that is perpendicular to this line, and it will cut this in the cut this at the midpoint of this. And also for this line, this one is the midpoint and for this, this is the midpoint and for this, this is the midpoint and this is the final structure. This is somehow, okay. Now again, if I will consider the next lattice point that is nearest to it, this will be, now let us change the color. Now next. This will be the nearest neighbor will be this one and again this one is the next nearest neighbor and this one is the next nearest neighbor and also this one okay now again if I will draw if I will draw the lines perpendicular to this and it will cut this at the midpoint midpoint of this line then this will be just like this and for this line it will cut also at the midpoint and also it is somehow look like this now you can see that this this black line this this region is known as the fast brillouin zone this region is known as the fast brillouin zone fast brillouin zone This is the fast wheel engine. And the next, the nearest neighbor for which we have drawn. Just a minute. 
Next for the nearest neighbor, the Wigner C cell that we have drawn here. So again, this line, or let me draw it in the other color. This red line, this portion you can see, this region, and this remaining region, and here also this region, and this part. So these are called the second reloin zone. This is called the second reloin zone. Second reloin zone. So we can say that. So here. Let me write. The first reloin zone. First reloin zone. Is that region. First reloin zone is that region. Which can be. Which can be accessed from. Which can be. Accessed, accessed from the central lattice point, from the central lattice point, central lattice point that is origin of reciprocal lattice, origin of reciprocal lattice, reciprocal lattice. Without crossing, without crossing single brillouin zone, without crossing single brillouin zone, single brillouin zone. So this is the first brillouin zone. Similarly, we can write for the second brillouin zone. So second brillouin zone is that region. Second brillouin zone. Brillouin zone is the region is the region after crossing after crossing first brillouin zone after crossing first brillouin zone but not the third brillouin zone but not the third brillouin zone third brillouin zone it means that for the nth brillouin zone we can say the nth brillouin zone nth brillouin zone brillouin zone crossing or i can write nth brillouin zone will cross will cross n minus 1 8th Brax plane, we can say Brax plane, plane, but not the n plus one eighth, n plus one eighth Brax plane, n plus one eighth Brax plane. Okay, so you can see that in this case, the fast Brillouin zone is drawn by using by drawing some nearest neighbor first. First, I will how we construct. First, we join the nearest neighbor. That is, this one is the nearest neighbor, and this one is the nearest neighbor, and again this one is the nearest neighbor, and this one is the nearest neighbor. Initially, and then we have drawn a perpendicular plane that will cut this line in a at the midpoint of this. And again, midpoint of this line. Again, this midpoint of this line. Again, midpoint to this line. Then this region, this is known as the first Brillouin zone. This region will known as the first Brillouin zone. And again, you can see for the second Brillouin zone. And again, for the second Brillouin zone, we will join the nearest neighbor. The second nearest neighbor, you can see. The second nearest neighbor, I will join this line. And again. This one and again this one, this four, and again we will draw a perpendicular that will the we can say the perpendicular plane that will cut this line at the midpoint to this, and again for this one, 
and again for this one and again for this one so here this reason only this particular reason only and this reason only and for this reason only these are called the second brillouin zone here you can see that this second brillouin zone will not cross this first brillouin zone neither it will cross the third brillouin zone how you can construct the third brillouin zone now you can similarly draw the next the next nearest neighbor here if i have considered this as my center this one is my center center lattice so now we will see the next nearest neighbor to this atom or to this lattice point then we have to draw some lines like this okay now that after again i have to draw the parallel planes sorry the perpendicular planes that will cut it in the cut it cut it at the midpoint to it and again for this and again for this and again for this now this region will known as the third brillouin zone okay now you can see that this third brillouin zone this will not cross the second brillouin zone and we can say that this will not cross the fourth brillouin zone or basically i can say that in this second brillouin zone if you will see this will be better in this second brillouin zone that is this black one you can see neither it will cross the first brillouin zone nor the third brillouin zone okay so for the nth brillouin zone we can say it will so this nth brillouin zone it means a crossing nth brillouin zone crossing n minus 1th brax plane but not the n plus 1th brax plane it means that we will cross this first plane we have already suppose in this case the first in the second brillouin zone we have already crossed this first brillouin zone okay so crossing this first brillouin zone but it will not cross the third brillouin zone okay so in this case you can see these are the lattice point here now this lines or this planes and this plane this particular area this is called as the first brillouin zone and this particular area that is after crossing this lattice point in between this lattice point this particular area and this particular area this part only and this part only this is known as the second brillouin zone okay now you can see that in this brax plane okay so the first and second brillouin zone for a one dimensional reciprocal lattice so the sides are spaced by 2 pi by a here you can see this is your pi by a to minus pi by a so this total distance is pi by a minus of minus pi by a so that will be equal to 2 pi by a and the first zone is the red area that is this one this one and the second zone is the disconnected outer that is the this area this one is the second brillouin zone so you just remember that the wigner c cell will define in the real space and the wigner c cell if it will define in the reciprocal space then that is called the brillouin zone okay if this wigner c cell will define in the reciprocal space then that will be known as the brillouin zone so this is all for today thank you all